day we gather to witness the joining of Matt and Kelly in marriage and the uniting of their families. Matt and Kelly, thank you, family and friends, both gathered here and joining from afar later by video streaming to celebrate their wedding on this most special of days. They have infused this ceremony with love of their families as well as love for each other. Now, some background. Some 65 years ago, I was the flower girl at Kelly's grandmother Janet's wedding to Kelly's grandfather, Paul Sprague in Boston. As a young girl, I played with Janet and Paul's sons, John, Kelly's dad, and David. Every summer when um, the Hunt family came to Massachusetts to visit grandparents. As John and David grew into men, they were very tight-lipped about their love lives. So Janet would commission me to learn the status of their girlfriends. She was especially curious about Eileen, whom Janet intuitively sensed was the one. Of course, Janet's intuition was correct, and several years later, I attended John and Eileen's wedding in upstate New York. Two years ago, I found myself continuing this Sprague tradition at Kelly's cousin Michael's wedding in Vermont, and I felt Janet's vivacious presence urging me to find out from Matt if and when he intended to marry Kelly. <laughs> so, at various previous Sprague family gatherings, I had observed Matt and Kelly's solid loving bond and how Matt naturally fit right in with the family, unflustered by anything that came up. So I felt pretty safe approaching him with my outrageous question, prompted by Janet, of course, whose mission as before I could not refuse. So I took Matt by the arm, guided him away from the reception, explained that I wanted to talk with him. I prefaced my question with the fact that I'm from the West Coast and therefore I have to talk with the family during those two rare occasions when we're together, rather than wait for what mother might otherwise be a more appropriate time. So I also told Matt that our conversation would be held in strictest confidence. Then channeling Janet, I asked Matt whether he and Kelly were going to get married. Matt, looking a bit stunned, but not <laughs> losing his composure, replied that he'd been planning to propose to Kelly later that year. It was my turn to be stunned, and I had not expected such a frank, ready response. <laughs> I was ecstatic. I wee hugged and returned to the reception. After Matt returned to Kelly, Eileen approached me to ask what Matt had said. <laughs> and I told her somewhat coyly that it was confidential and for Matt to reveal at a time of his choosing. So perhaps the smile on my face betrayed this confidential secret because the next morning if the extended family members were talking at the brunch, they were saying they're going to, we're all going to see each other at the next family wedding. <laughs> Later, I learned that Matt had already pulled Megan aside to share his intentions because she would be returning to California and he wouldn't get to see her in person again before proposing to Kelly. Well, friends, have teased Matt and Kelly for still being in the honeymoon phase after six years of courtship. But together, they have navigated challenges. They have mourned the loss of beloved family members, discussed whether to grow their families someday. Perhaps most challenging, they discuss whether they should get a pet cat in their near future. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly says that her family and friends knew Matt was the one when she agreed that yes, they will get a cat someday. <laughs> whether sitting on the sorry about that. whether sitting on the couch watching European soccer games, quarantined in less than 800 square feet for months on end, or exploring new cities and cultures around the world, Kelly and Matt know in their hearts that what matters most that they're together. As an added bonus, Matt's and Kelly's parents become dear friends, frequently gathering each other's homes. Mike and Sybil have been coming to Marion for John and Eileen's annual neighborhood picnic for several years. And John and Eileen have traveled to Vermont to visit Montpelier, where Matt grew up, and to the Brigham family farm in St. Albans. They relish recalling how during one such visit, which included a tour of the barn, John found some manure on his jacket as a parting <laughs> gift. I don't know if John laughs about that as much. But. Many of Matt's relatives live on the farm, which incidentally has been the site of many family weddings, including Matt's parents and grandparents. 
The group is an outspoken and spirited crowd, so introducing a new significant other can seem like a daunting task. But from the very first time Kelly met everyone on the farm, she has fit into the group seamlessly as one of the gang. Family has always been important to Matt and Kelly. The fact that their families have joined together so naturally has enhanced the foundation and strength of their relationship. In consultation with their families, Matt and Kelly have worked thoughtfully together to create a ceremony that embodies who they are and what they mean to each other. Throughout the ever-changing nature of the last several months, Kelly and Matt have prioritized their love for each other. And here we are with 18 people in person at their wedding in Mattapoisett. Yet Kelly and Matt feel the love from so many more of you, family, friends, loved ones joining from your home screens. They're grateful to all of you, both near and far, for celebrating their special wedding day with them. And through all these changes, Matt and Kelly have gained a greater appreciation for love and life now more than ever. Now John will read The Art of a Good Marriage. <laughs> the Art of a Good Marriage by Wilford Arlen Peterson. Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never too old to old hands. It is remembering to say, I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers the whole family. It is doing things for each other not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow old. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal Dependence is mutual and the obligation is reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. Thank you, John. Thank you. Now, Sybil will read Irish Blessing. I speak pretty loud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> May your joys be as bright as the morning and your sorrows merely shadows that fade in the sunlight of love. May you have enough happiness to make you sweet, enough trials to make you strong, enough sorrow to keep you human, enough hope to keep you happy, enough failure to keep you humble, and enough success to keep you eager enough friends to give you comfort, enough faith and courage in yourself to banish sadness, enough wealth to meet your needs, and one more thing, enough determination to make each day a more wonderful day than the one before. Matt and Kelly will now exchange their vows. Kelly, I love you with all my heart, and I stand here before our friends and family sharing the happiest day of my life with you. I want nothing more than to share my future with you. I promise to respect you and cherish you as an individual, a partner, and an equal. I promise to love not only who you are today, but to love the person you grow into. I promise to always apologize after stealing the covers, because we both know <laughs> I can't help it. I promise to remember that neither one of us is perfect, but strive to remind myself of the ways we are perfect for each other. I see these vows not as promises, but as privileges. I get to laugh with you and cry with you, care for you and share with you. I get to build with you and live with you, listen to you and learn from you. I get to run with you and walk with you, support you and be supported by you. I get to stare into your beautiful eyes and fall asleep next to you every night. I get to tell you that I love your hair exactly how it is every day and be truly privileged to be able to tell you. Most importantly, I get to be myself with you and you can be yourself with me. Kelly, I love you and I will forever. That was really sweet. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> uh, now Kelly will read her vows to Matt. Which is harder after he just did. <laughs> you got the hard job. <laughs> As usual. 
Matt. Soon after we first met more than six years ago, it was clear to me that you are a loyal, communicative, and thoughtful person. One of the first things my family said after meeting you was that I am totally myself when I am around you. You love me for exactly who I am. You not only make me feel like the most beautiful woman in the world, but also the most intelligent, most worthy, and most loved. You challenge me when I need to be challenged. You calm me down when I am stressed or overthinking. You make me laugh at even the silliest things, especially the random songs you make up throughout the day. <laughs> you forgive me when I've made a mistake. You are constantly doing kind, generous things for other people. And you inspire me to be a better person each and every day. I promise to travel the world with you. I promise to laugh at all your jokes. I promise to hold space for you when you need it most. I promise to compliment your sunglasses collection. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to remain loyal to you. I promise to care for you when you are sick. I promise to let you park far away from a store just so we can be next to a fancy car. <laughs> and on the long walk in, I promise to listen to you tell me about random cat facts. <laughs> I promise to work through challenges together as a team. I promise to keep the fruit off your desserts. <laughs> I promise to trust you and listen to you with an open heart. I promise to communicate my needs with honesty and patience. I promise to prioritize us above all else. Matt, I can't wait to spend endless mundane and exciting, comfortable and uncomfortable, scary and empowering little moments with you. You raise me up every single day and I promise to raise you up for the rest of our lives. I love you. So now Matt and Kelly will exchange rings. These rings that they're about to give each other and place on each other's fingers are symbols of their unending love for each other. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my love and commitment. Of my love and commitment. To, to you to you and our life together and our life together <laughs> Got like... I give you this okay. okay please I figure I give you this ring I give you this ring as a symbol as a symbol of my love and commitment of my love and commitment to you to you and our life together and our life together. Big knuckle. Yeah. Right, we got it. <laughs> okay, by the power vested in me as an out of state justice, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You can have a kiss. Oh. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I now, my honor to introduce you, Mr. and Mrs. Matt McShane. Husband and wife. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. It's coming at you. We got it. We got it. It's cool. All right. <laughs> Yay! We did it. Yes. We did. Oh my god! Just go. I love you. Lost the flower. Let's watch everybody else. Taylor! You're married! Wait, were you playing cards? Oh, you hurt my face. Oh, art is so good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.